I'm here at the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research in Dubna in Russia, the place where so many of the super heavy elements have been created. And I'm going to show you an absolutely key component for making those elements. And it's also probably the most expensive compound you've ever seen. And the sample I'm going to show you is here on the table. In many of our videos about these heavy elements, we've talked about accelerating a light element onto a target and creating the super heavy element. But we've usually rather dismissed what the light element is. We've said, well, it's calcium plus element calcium 20. 20 plus 95 makes 115. It is actually a very special isotope of calcium called calcium 48. It occurs naturally, but in a very, very small abundance. So it has to be separated from the other isotopes, the other atoms of calcium. And because calcium doesn't have any compounds that are gaseous, it literally has to be separated atom by atom in a large magnetic separator. And so it is very expensive. So here we have calcium carbonate, but which just contains calcium 48. It's so valuable and my hands shake so much, I'm not allowed to touch it. But here with this pen, you can see the approximate scale. There are two grams of calcium carbonate here, which are worth, or at least if you wanted to buy it, would cost you about half a million dollars. This is $250 for a milligram. A milligram is about the smallest amount you can see easily. You're paying for the calcium. The carbon dioxide and oxygen come free. All things come with a bonus when you buy them in the supermarket. If you buy calcium 48, you get the carbonate free. The reason why it is so expensive is because you have to produce ions of calcium by heating it to a very, very high temperature and then separating it in a high vacuum under a magnetic field. And so you need a very big piece of apparatus with huge electromagnets using a vast amount of electricity and apparently the industrial scale production of this material is 10 grams a year. So they produce about five times as much as you can see in this bottle in a year. This isotope is only used in nuclear physics and most of it is used for synthesizing super heavy elements. It is only made in one place in the world, the so-called the Electro Combine, Electro Cabinet, which is in a town called Lisnoy, which is about 200 kilometers north of the big city of Ekaterinburg in the Ural Mountains. So there's a monopoly supplier. But if you want to make money, making calcium 48 is probably not the market that you should go in for because there's so few customers. You can't use calcium carbonate in the accelerators, you need to use calcium metal. There is some quite interesting and simple two-stage chemistry. First of all, you heat the calcium carbonate to drive off the carbon dioxide. The second stage involves a variation of the so-called thermite reaction, which we have shown you before, where you mix the calcium oxide with aluminium powder and heat them up and the aluminium powder reacts with the oxygen because it has a stronger affinity for the oxygen than the calcium. The calcium metal, this tiny sample or sample of calcium 48, is then put into the iron source of the cyclotron. This is where they make the calcium ions. The iron source then generates calcium ions which are accelerated up to about a tenth of the speed of light and smashed into the target. The apparatus runs at a rate of about one milligram of calcium 48 per hour. So here we have 
two grams of calcium carbonate, which is probably one and a half grams of calcium metal, or perhaps a little less. So this is enough to run for more than a thousand hours of cyclotron time. But you can see with this sort of price, it's an expensive experiment. But the other costs of running the cyclotron are also large. So even if you've spent half a million dollars on buying this, you still have to spend some more money to start synthesizing your super heavy elements. You might ask yourself, what is special about calcium-48 that people go to all this trouble, whereas they could get tons of the cheaper calcium for the same price? The answer is that calcium-48 has the largest excess of neutrons. Calcium is atomic number 20, so it has 20 protons. And because it's 48, it has 28 neutrons. When you are making a super heavy element, the more neutrons you can get into the final nucleus of the heavy element, the more likely it is to be stable. By and large, the number of neutrons in the target nucleus is fixed. So you want to choose the light element, the projectile, to be containing as many neutrons as possible. Now, you don't have much choice because the identity of the element is dictated by the number of protons. If you want to add 20 to the, to the atomic number of your target, you have to use calcium. So you want the calcium isotope that has the most neutrons. And the number of neutrons and number of protons in calcium are both so-called magic numbers for particularly stable nucleus. So 28 is a magic number for neutrons, 20 for protons. So calcium-48 is a double magic nucleus. You can't get better than that. And when you bang the projectile into the target, if the two nuclei fuse together, then the nucleus still has a lot of energy and it loses part of that energy as neutrons coming out. And because you've got lots of neutrons, you'll still have plenty left in the final nucleus. And calcium-48 has been the absolute key to the success of the synthesis of these super heavy elements in Dubna, which is why they are the principal customer for the production of the calcium-48. The problem is, for future synthesis of elements, is that the highest atomic number of any target that has been successfully used so far is 98, Californium. So you can see it just works for element 118. Calcium, 20. Californium, 98. Put them together, you get 118. But if you want to make 119 or 120, you've got to go to a heavier projectile. The scientists working here are looking at titanium-50. But titanium-50 is not as good as calcium-48. It doesn't have a magic number. So they're going to have to build a much more sensitive apparatus if they have any chance of success in detecting the new elements. Doesn't stick. And you go on throwing and throwing more and more. And eventually, after days perhaps, they stick together and you make a big atom.